Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 23 in this series on developing a survival game. This is the first lesson in section 3, so congratulations on making it this far. In this video, we will be making our flashlight and battery system. We'll create an advanced flashlight that flickers as the battery gets low. This video and this series have been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors. And with that said, open up your project and let's make a start. Hi everyone, welcome back to the editor and welcome to section three of this series. Congratulations on making it this far. And in this section, we'll be working on our equipment system. And given all the work that it took to get our inventory system up and running so that we could do this and see items and things like that, I figure we'll start with something where we can at least see the fruits of our labor right away. Now that said, while we will be able to see what we work on today working right away, at the end of today we're going to set it so it doesn't work. And that's because we're going to set a flashlight system up and we're going to set this flashlight system so that we can see, hey, the flashlight's working. And then we're going to set it so it only works when we have equipped a flashlight. So, all of that said, we're going to start by bringing in a lighting profile. And if you open up the folder for all the assets, we have a lighting asset. And in there, we have a free lighting profile. Now, while this is called a lighting texture, it's technically not a texture but I'm still gonna be a little bit naughty and put it in my textures folder. I'm gonna create a new subfolder called lighting. And in there, I'm going to just import this asset. All right, there we go. And there is our lighting asset. Now we can change this to, well, it's already as an IES profile, you can see the lighting effect kind of there. Um, it's easier to see here. Now. To walk you through how I did all the work to, or all the numbers for this, because you have to work out some numbers, is I took a light, in particular I took a spotlight, there we go, and I rotated it to face this back wall, and I pulled it out a bit, pulled it out to where I wanted it to be, and I set the lighting profile, so right there, and I worked out the numbers that I wanted for my lighting system to work. Now instead of walking you through all of that, I'm just gonna show you the end result, which is the numbers I used in the character. So that said, let's go back to our survival game, core character, open up our first person character, and then we're gonna close everything to the right of our construction script and go to our viewport. In our viewport, we need to add our light source. Now we're gonna add to this as a child of our camera. And the reason for this is we want the light to move with the camera as if it was following the player's um, head movements. Mostly because that makes gameplay easier and we're gonna just call this a head mounted flashlight. So I'm gonna select the camera. I'm going to search for spotlight. And there we go, we can see there's a spotlight there. Now I'm going to call this flash light source and I'm going to move it away from the character's head just a bit. Oh, there we go. And I I'm going to set the lighting profile. We only have the three lobes one. That's what we're going to use there. And I want to use a lighting profile's intensity. Now, I'll tell you that it's about a factor of 10 different. So 0.75 on a spotlight offside, outside of the character's head works perfectly fine. 7.5 is what I had to use here. So that will give me the sort of lighting I want in terms of that profile. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the attenuation radius. I want it to be a bit longer. I want the spotlight to just extend out for about double the length we currently have. So I'm gonna set that to 2000. I'm gonna to wanna to have an inner cone radius so that there's some variation in how intense the light is. And I've chosen 30 as my inner cone radius. 
Again, you can pick whatever numbers you want to work for you. I'm going to do 45 as my outer cone. Not that that matters too much. And I'm going to set this to be, well, we're going to just test this real quick. We'll leave it as visible for a moment. Let's just make sure this works. And you can see there is our lighting profile. All right. Now to turn our light off as default, what I'm going to do is under rendering, I'm going to set this as not being visible. So visible will be marked as false. And just because I'm weird, I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis. It's a circle, so it doesn't matter too much. But I, I, for some reason, have found on other versions of this that it works slightly better. I had to turn the lighting back on. I don't know why. It might just be a placebo effect. But hey, you know what? It's a circle. It doesn't make much of a difference. Play with the numbers until you find a values that you like for what you are doing. I am also going to lower this just slightly on the Y. I should technically that raises it. And just even out some of my numbers. There we go. Again, you, you can play with these numbers to get the effect that you want to get. All right, with that done, what we're going to do next is actually set up our input events to turn on and off our flashlight. So let's go back to our main window, go to settings, go to project settings. And in project settings, we're going to go to input. And under input, we can minimize the harvest there. We are going to create a new function or new uh, action mapping, mapping called flashlight. And flashlight will have two keys, one for our keyboard and mouse and one for our controller. We'll use F for our keyboards and mouse and gamepad D-pad up. So this is the left-hand side of the gamepad. Again, we don't need to save anything. It automatically saves, so we can just close this out. And in our character, what we're going to do is find an empty space, and I'm going to go right underneath our sprint uh, movement stuff, mostly because over here we're going to be doing some stuff related to our encumbrance and our, sorry, our equipment system. Uh, I'm just remembering that we're going to get rid of that in a moment. That's why I said encumbrance. We get rid of that when we set up our encumbrance part of the equipment system. All right, so over here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to search for my flashlight action event. There we go. And we're going to do a simple flip flop so that when they press it the first time, it turns on. When they press it the second time, it turns off. Remember how we flip flops get activated no matter, sorry, it doesn't matter what activates it like we did with the sprint here. Remember that, because that's going to be important. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a Boolean variable. So let's just grab off the uh, is a and promote to variable. B flash light is active. So we can plug that into both of these. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing now. Flashlight is active. If it's active, we're going to take this flashlight source and we're going to set visibility. We can propagate that to children. And we're going to do new visibility as is if the flashlight is active. So now this is how we make that polymorphic function that I've been talking about up here and here. All we have to do now is take this and collapse it to a function of set flashlight active. And we can just say B is active and set this into the category of equipment, subcategory, flashlight. And we can put this into our bulls category. So it's a fairly simple function, but it's covering both the true, it's active, and the false, it's inactive. Let's test this out, make sure this works. Let's hit play. I'm going to just face this wall here. I'm going to hit F. It turns on. I'm going to hit F again. It turns off. F on, F off. Yeah, I caught myself as I was saying it. I might have also intentionally realized what I was saying and thought maybe I'll get away with it. Maybe I won't. Yeah, no, I didn't realize. I paused because I realized as I was saying it. 
So the next thing we want to do really is create a set of events for our flashlight losing charge. So the battery will deplete the longer the player uses it. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of custom events. So custom event one will be flashlight battery drain. And instead of having a UI system that warns the player, hey, the flashlight's draining, we're gonna actually have the flashlight flicker. We're gonna create a custom event called flashlight flicker. All right, let's start with the drain. We've already done things very similar to this, but now what we're going to do is we are going to do a polymorphic draining function. So we need to do a new variable. This will be of type float called flashlight battery. So I mentioned it is type float and it will go into our flashlight equipment category. And we'll just grab off of here. And all we're gonna do is do a clamp on a float here between zero and well, we could do zero on one but I don't wanna work in proportions. We'll do zero and 100, and we'll pull off of here and do float plus float, and we'll take the flashlight battery. This has to be in the top one. Actually, it doesn't technically, but it makes life easier if it is. And I'm actually gonna plug a second one into the bottom. What I'm going to do, however, is just select these nodes, and I am going to collapse to a function, and this will be drain battery. Funny part is this actually isn't just drain, it is polymorphic in nature. All right, so with that done, we're gonna change this over to delta, as in change, charge. Now, the funny part is this really isn't drain because this is a polymorphic setup. We can put a positive number in here to recharge the battery. Yes, I am putting a my usual lovely sexy return node in. Return nodes are, are sexy. All right, with that done, let's go back here and let's line that up. And we're gonna set our delta charge in this case to be negative. It does have to be negative or this will not work, one. All right, now with that done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our flashlight flicker. So the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna go back in here. We're gonna go to our return node and we're gonna plug in our flashlight battery. We're gonna call this our battery level. All right, and with that done, well, what we're gonna do here is have a function that will set our flashlight flicker. So we want to check if our battery is low. So we're gonna do less than or equal to, and we're gonna do this as 15. So under 15, so 15%, assuming the battery is at 100, or is out of 100, this will be considered low. So we're gonna check if battery is low. Just gonna reline that up a little bit. Pop a few reroutes in to make this a little bit easier to follow. There we go. So if it is low, what we are going to do is we are going to start a timer. So let's go off the true here. I don't know if I can pull off the false there. And we'll do set timer by event. And instead of pulling from here to there, because it's one hideous and two, we're gonna put this in a function in a moment, we will create event. What event will we create? Our flashlight flicker. By the way, if you could hear that key click, I was clearly doing the same thing I did in the last section. By the way, uh, if you heard me say key click very harshly, that was because I've edited it out the three times I misspoke. I have set it to looping, by the way, and it's gonna loop every uh, 15th of a second. We're going to promote this to a variable, which will be called flashlight flicker, TH again for timer handle. And we're gonna store our timer handle in our equipment flashlight folder. And from there, what we're gonna do is, is we're going to set up a flicker event. By the way, there's a lot more we have to do here. I'm intentionally skipping a lot of steps so I can talk about some of the logic issues. All right, so now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our flashlight flicker. The way that's gonna work is we're gonna do our flip-flop event again. And this time we're gonna use the inverse of A. We wanna make sure it's not A. So when we come through the first time, it's gonna be true. Well, we don't want that to be true, so we want this to be 
is not A. And uh, this is technically A. Um, so we're going to do our set flashlight active. All we're going to do is take our, let me just move this into our correct folder of equipment flashlight. We're going to do our set flashlight active. Plug into there. Plug the not into the is active. And let's just quickly grab our battery and set the battery to 16. Now, this isn't going to work if we test this yet because we skipped a step. If you don't believe me, let's just test this and show you it's not working. I'm going to hit F to turn the flashlight off, hit F to turn it back on. We need a timer to run here. So let's set our timer up and then we can test this to make sure it's flickering. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to, again, do a set timer by event. And again, we're going to create event. This event will be our flashlight drain. And it will loop. It will loop every second. And we're going to promote this to a, a variable. and will be battery drain th for timer handle. And put that into the correct category. Compile. And now we can test this. So we hit F we can see that it flickers. Now, of course, there's a small problem with this. Now, the problem is, what is this number here now? Three, two, one, zero, 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 zero. It's still flickering. So we need to turn the flashlight off if the flicker stops. Or sorry, if the battery uh, drains completely. I misspoke there. So, well, there's two things we really need to do. We need to take care of two sets of timer functions. The way we're going to do this is we're going to just start by making one set of functions real quick. I'm just going to grab off of here and do a branch. And then we'll create the other set of functions before we actually, and I say create, I mean just make them, not set them up fully. I'm going to take these three nodes, the branch, the set timer with this create event and its um, variable set, so fairly four nodes, collapse to a function. And this will be set flashlight timer, actually timers, plural. And we'll change this to B is flashlight active. Put this in our usual flashlight category. We're going to take these nodes here, and this will be our set flashlight flicker with an input of battery level. All right, let's just hand that up that way for now. This one's actually done. Let's start with our flicker, or sorry, with the timer. We're going to come in here. We want to make sure the flashlight is active. I'm going to fix my typo. There we go, my typo is fixed. With that done, in our timers, what we need to do is make sure one, that it's on. Now, the second thing we need to do is make sure that we actually, when we turn it on and off, that we actually haven't already set our timers. Because we don't want to recreate the timer every single time we turn our flashlight on and off. What we want to do is pause our timer if it's off. So we're gonna come off the false for a moment. We're gonna set our battery drain timer handle and we're going to pause timer by handle. All right, that can go into there. We are going to do a check if our flicker timer handle is active. So flashlight flicker. This is just gonna be paused, we're not unpausing anything. So we're pausing the timer by handle here. All right, so if we turn off the flashlight, we pause our timer handles. If we turn the flashlight back on or we turn the flashlight on full stop, there's a difference. If we turn it on the first time and the battery's full, then we don't have a flicker. If it gets down to 5% and turn it off and back on, the flashlight should have a flicker. So what we need to check is to make sure if there is a drain already started. We'll take care of the flicker event elsewhere. And I use the flicker, but this applies to the drain. You know, if we're at 100%, I've never turned it on, or at 50%, I've never turned it on because you start at 50%, then the timer handle doesn't exist. And we need to create it. Once it exists, we're just pausing and unpausing it. So we're going to do is timer paused by handle. 
if the timer doesn't exist, then this will return a false. If it does exist and it's paused, then it returns a true. If it does exist and it's not paused, well, that actually should never happen, but it would return a false. Um, the idea here is that if this exists, the flash has been turned on once, and therefore it should either be paused or active. This won't come through here if it's if the flashlight's active. So this should never trigger if this is true. In other words, this is active. It will only trigger if the flashlight is turned off or and is being turned back on. And then this is inactive being created being made active again. So the very first time we turn the flashlight on, we don't have a timer handle for the battery drain. We need to create one. Because we don't have one, this is going to return false because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, it can't be paused. When it does exist, well, it can be paused and therefore it can be unpaused. All right, that was probably just a really long-winded explanation that wasn't clear. So again, really simply. First time you turn the flashlight on, is active, true. Does this, is the timer handle uh, paused? No, because it doesn't exist, create it. Turn the flashlight off, so this is now false. We pause it, turn it back on. Well, it's now been created, it's now been paused, so this is true, unpause it. We are going to do the same for the flicker. Like I said, I was getting ahead of myself. We're gonna do the is timer paused by handle up here. Let's see if uh, me saying again, my head of myself is making no sense to you. It means I've edited out a mistake I made earlier, which hey, makes my life easier. Or makes your life easier, not mine. And then we're going to unpause that timer handle if it was already paused. Because you can have a drain, but no flicker just yet. So that is our set timers. It's actually really one timer, but and we'll do our return node down here. There we go. And everything goes to that lovely, sexy return node. All right, let's go back to our event graph. That is that part. Let's go to our Flickr event. And this is where things get a bit weird. Well, remember that if the battery is completely drained, we don't want it to flicker and we want to turn the flashlight off. So we're going to break that for a moment. We want to know if the battery is dead. So we're going to take this value again and we're going to check is it less than or equal to zero. Let's put a few reroutes in. Again, remember reroutes are optional. It just is for ease of reading. All right, and we're going to do another branch. We're going to do this one off the true here. So the battery is low. Is the battery dead? So check if battery is dead. All right, if the battery is dead, then we are going to take the flicker and we are going to clear that timer handle and invalidate it. We no longer need it to exist. And same with the drain. So technically, yeah, the drain will no longer exist It'll be like turning on the first time if you let the battery completely die. And when this happens, we want to turn the light off. Well, I gave a hint what we're gonna do for that. The sprint system was our hint. So we're gonna do a custom event called abort flashlight. And we're gonna go straight into our flip-flop here. Okay, back in our flicker, at the end of our clearing and validating our timer handles, will abort our flashlight. So this clears timer and then turns off flashlight dead battery. To remember the difference between this and turning off the battery by hand. The next thing we're gonna do is very similar to what we did in our timers. We're gonna check, is the flicker paused? So is timer paused by handle? and have a little branch there. If it is paused by handle, then we will unpause it, just like we did in the last set of nodes. So it's gonna be unpause timer by handle. Plug that into the true. 
line that up. And then if it is not true, we want to check, is this valid? We could use the is valid node elsewhere, by the way. But when I say elsewhere, I mean in here, we could use an is valid node. But I, I think the pause check is better because it will turn return false if it isn't valid. So if this isn't valid, this is going to return false. What we're doing here is checking do we need to actually create a, um, a timer handle or not. So now we're going to do our create event down here, or create timer by event. And there we go. I'm not going to put any return nodes into this one. And this is start flicker or resume flicker if flash. Wow, I have flight light on my other version. If flashlight was turned off by user. Actually, I lied. We're going to have returns. I'm just going to do a return there. Plug that into there. Ah. I'm having a hard time with the mouse today. All right, and put another return up here. Line that up. All right. So we now have our flashlight system in place. All right, so that takes us through the main part of our flashlight. So if we hit play, hit F, notice that it's now flickering because we're near a drain point. If I turn it off, it turns off. If I turn it back on, it'll start flickering right away. And eventually the battery should die in about say nine seconds. So if I'm doing a math right in my head, it should be dying, well, now. And there it is, it's dead. Looks like we have a bit of a problem where I can turn it on if the battery has died. So what we want to do is one more thing. We want to do one more thing right here. We're gonna just do another uh, check on if this is active or not. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a branch here. We have two things we want to check. We are going to do an and. And the first thing we want to check is the flashlight equipped. So we're going to do B flashlight is equipped. So if it's equipped, then we can turn it on. And we're going to default this to true just for now. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to get our battery. And we are going to check, is that greater than zero? So if it's not greater than zero, we have no battery. All right. There we go. Let's hit play. So let's turn it on. We get our flicker. If we pop over here, and go into our drain battery and turn this on. You can see it's coming through. It's four seconds, three, two, one, it's dead. I hit F again, nothing happens. So let's just go back to our event graph. And I want you to pay attention to this bit, particularly right there. That's because our battery is zero. So I want you after this video and to set this to false because we're gonna actually create a system for equipping our flashlight. But this is our basic system for our flashlight. We will have one more event down here for it, by the way. So hope you, hopefully you've enjoyed making your flashlight system. And if you have, well, make sure to give this video a like down below. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Hanas, Quadmanson, Rian, Connor, one volt 10 and Galois. If the series is something you're interested in seeing more of, if you want to stick around and see how our equipment system is going to fully operate with regards to our inventory system, our flashlight and what have you, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify bell below. If you want a copy of this project, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers get instant access to all ongoing projects on YouTube that I'm teaching. And at other tiers, individuals will get access when projects are completed. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. And again, welcome to section three.
And also, I hope that you have a wonderful day.